Thank you for seeing Puffs, by the way. Hey, I appreciate it. It was fun to act in. I loved it. And, and if you didn't see Puffs, that means you're a jerk. But thank you if you did see it, though, because as if I've learned anything from it, it's that I'm loud as fuck. Yeah, ask any cast member. They'll back me up on that statement. Because, yes, I'm kind of a loud person. Whenever I, I seem quiet... And I'm actually louder than I think I than I think I am. So, uh, and one a good example is is during one of the rehearsals, uh, the director, aka Jessica Winningham. If you don't know her, she it was one of the main characters in the movie Four Color Eulogy. He, so, oh, every rehearsal she write she takes notes on the show and emails it to us so we can see like what needs improving. And and there was and for the first couple rehearsals there was a big issue with people talking backstage because the set was pretty much a wall, four doors, and a couple, like, tunnels. Those, and the only way you can get on stage is for, is through those built entrances. So, and so you have a bunch of walls and it's very hard to hear your cues. Was, and the, and you, especially harder when people are talking. And so there was a big issue with people talking backstage. And, and this takes three rehearsals before everyone was able to get down to a whisper. But the first day of this was, like, in the director's notes, there's the note that says, hey, people need to be quiet backstage so actors can hear their cues. And then underneath that comment, my name highlighted, and, and I quote, Andrew, you are especially loud backstage. Now... Now, I'm not embarrassed by the fact that she just pointed out that I'm loud. loud. I'm embarrassed by the fact that I'm the one who's, who hardly even speaks. It's, nor do people ever speak to me. Like, the only time I am ever, like, like speaking is, like, like, I'm going around backstage just listening to people's conversations, hope, hoping something comes up that I can and relate to and talk about. Now, out and like sometimes reacting to what they're saying and like and the only people that ever talk to me personally are my boyfriends which you also know them as Doug and Ethan yeah they're yeah they're, they're really those are the only two like friends I have that like personally talk to me like in theater of course I do have other friends outside of theater but but yeah and I can see why people don't talk to me I am a very, I am a very confusing person. Like no one understands my personality. I don't even understand myself. Now, I once took a personality test and the system crashed. And then it finally rebooted and got out the results. WTF exclamation point. Cause yeah, I'm very confusing. Cause half of the time I'm Jay and the other half I'm Silent Bob. Uh, uh, and mixed in with the craziness of Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers, and when I'm calm, I'm the greeter at Walmart. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, you guys are scratching your heads to about that. <laughs> I don't. I'm, you're like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this guy talking about? Yes, very confusing personality, which I tend to have, I, I have pretty wild behavior, which granted me the title, The Wild. That's right, I am Andrew The Wild, and that title already makes my family uncomfortable. <laughs> you can see why. <laughs> but yes, I am The Wild. <laughs> so, yeah, and because of that, that there's... And one piece of advice that uh, Jessica uh, um, um, gives out to the cast is do, do not pull an Andrew. You know, and that comes from the fact that I'm kind of a method actor. Or like whatever the script, whatever happens to my character in the story, I'm fucking doing it. Every injury, every stunt, every blow or flyback, I'm fucking doing it. It like... Like, really live, really like, like, okay, that didn't, that didn't, I didn't respond to that correctly, but basically, hey, when I fly, when there's a point where I'm, like, flying back, I'm fucking flying back. 
And like, I'll just straight up jump all the way, jump back so I'm airborne, and then land on my wrist. And, and, what, and she's like, uh, uh, don't break your wrist like Andrew. Which, fun fact, I've never broken my wrist. But yeah, it's just, it's just my technique is just not safe. Okay, that's the only problem, so don't pull an Andrew. And I have a tendency, which I'm kind of egotistical, so... Uh, like, I'll do, I'll pretty much go, like, a way over, above and beyond my character. <laughs> or sometimes I had a tendency to adding lines and, and changing it up a little, uh, which was, at some points, was not okay. And especially, especially during the dance scene. And where, like, was the Death Buddies and Mr. Voldy at the nightclub. I've been dancing. And if you don't, if you didn't see me, it... Imagine Austin Powers, Michael Jackson, and Angus Young, and give them long hair. That's me. I'm straight up break dancing on stage during that scene, and and I, even then, like I did, like Ang I usually do, like Angus Young spasms. <laughs> I don't have the space to do it here, but <laughs> but yeah, you can tell, <laughs> you can tell I have too much energy because of that. Uh, and the final battle scene, which I change, which I'm supposed to like come in, surprise the puffs with two spells. Well, I change the spells every night. I, like every day, it's ranged, ranged from um, Adukin, Fusroda, uh, Bazinga, uh, Shuryukin, and and Billy on Bombawebe, Ibambe, Big Big Bickety Bang, April Fools, surprise homies. Is in even the final show night, and his name is John Cena. Uh, that's what I did last night. Just any quote that's just said loudly or sounds like a spell. Hold <laughs> Which, oh my god. Because, well, I changed it up because, well, you gotta keep up with Zack Smith. Because, <laughs> yes, that's how much of a that's how much of a troublemaker I am. And I'll do. <laughs> I'll do straight up anything, and I'll do anything to be remembered, I'll do anything and to pick up chicks, I'll do anything to get laid, which, sadly enough, haven't done any of those things. Yes, that's, that's already, those were already the causes of my depression, and from months ago, oh, and yet... And yet, I still can't do it. I'll do anything and to be remembered, but just no one ever pays attention or even thinks things that like I did something to like be be admired for. I especially like final like last night. I made a batch of butter beer. If you don't know what butter beer is, it's it's that drink from Harry Potter that tastes like diabetes. Yeah, if they sold it in stores, the price tag would say your left foot. No, that's how that's how fucking sugary it is. So I just made a batch of butter beer, and I made like a bunch of. And as you can tell, uh, I come from a family of alcoholics, so most of our drink devices are associated with alcohol. So basically, I took like three. A gr I took like two and a half full growlers of butter beer. If you don't know what a growler is, it's this. Just this type of container. Uh, plus a margarita mixer, which looks like this. <laughs> As because I brought it to make frozen butter beers, as I made enough for all the cast members. Which I mean, it it was a it was a hit for those who drank some, because all and if I can recall, only ten people drank some butter beer. But <laughs> but imagine the suspicion when. And, like, I came out of the car, I had a cooler full of two growlers, there was a margarita mixer, and I walked through the front door of the school, and, like, and there's, and people, and the looks of confusion of people, what is that kid bringing? And, <laughs> yeah, I'm a man, I'm, I'm lucky I made it I past any adult in the front. Uh, Cause I would, I probably would have been out searched for alcohol there. They open up the cooler. Uh, what the fuck is going on here? Uh, what is? What is it? St. Patrick's Day or something? What is this? Yes, a kid is br pretty much bringing, 
and something that is associated with transporting alcohol in the school, but no, it was full of butterbeer. Which, butterbeer, by the way, it's not, it doesn't have alcohol, just to let you know. <laughs> and then, and then after that, like, <laughs> but yeah, the, <laughs> it was well received. And by the people who just drank it. And I even, like, packed it all up and brought it to the cast party, which was at someone's house afterwards. And, then, and I plugged in the machine. No one, no one has, like, no one wanted one. And which, that, that sucked. Not for me. Eh, but, but anyway. But I got, but, I mean, after parties. I love after parties, especially... Hey, last night's party, it was fun. We played a game of Cards Against Humanity. That was great. But the Friday night, but the night before that, that like it was such it was such a good show night. I right, like the audience. Like, like we got the, we had a good audience. It was laughing, and we were, me and Doug were straight up shaking backstage, and we're like, oh my god, I love this audience. Just straight up celebrating backstage. And when we got out to the lobby at the end of the show, we were just hanging out with F2, me, Doug, and Ethan, and plus a, plus another girl we're friends with. We're just hanging out backstage, and we were loud and obnoxious. As in, like, there's a bunch of other people around us, like, meeting the cast members, and no one and no one is coming near us. Because, because well, we only play minor, we only play cameo roles, and who's interested in a fucking cameo? So we, so we were just loud and and became like, and we were just like, and we had this thing where like every time Doug hugged this girl, like it pretty much became a chain reaction that we all had to hug her, and it, that happened so many times, and so, which got to the point where we were just running outside the front door, we we're running and chasing each other, screaming up and down the sidewalk. Uh, because Doug like keep like won't stop hugging this girl. <laughs> well, and <laughs> and yes, we we're still excited and just hyped up. Which I, because of that, I invented a new term called called after party shit face, which is basically a you have party mode on, like like you have continued party mode on even after an exciting event. And so I'm just... <laughs> so you basically give off the appearance of being drunk when you're really not. That's, and if everybody... And if you ask anybody how we behaved that night, all right, they would be like, we need to get those those three in rehab. Hey, everybody, just so you know, this is, this is the butter beer I ma made. Yeah, it's a pretty... Which... That's a pretty good, like, consistency, too. Ew. Yeah, but my strategy is I mix the cream in it. And so that way it's, like, it's all over. Yeah, so, oh, you can make it for yourself if you want to. Yeah, there's a bunch of recipes online, so, oh, go ahead and make it for yourself if you want some.